All right, we are here in beautiful sunny Florida breaking down UFC Fight Night 96, Olenekar versus Dotson in Portland, Oregon. Awesome, awesome main event. You know, the card's all right, but uh, man, that's just a banger of a main event. But um, yeah, man, I just want to say thanks to all the people that are watching my videos. I love doing these, and um, you know, all the views are just motivation to keep on doing them. Um, I'm going to do some quick shout outs. I haven't done that since the first uh, video I did. Uh, shouts to the homie Will Martin for uh, shouting me out in his uh, UFC Portland breakdown. That's awesome. Much love to him. And uh, shout outs to all the people I uh, interact with on Twitter. You know, um, Rockstar Z, you know, he makes great videos, great mind for the sport. Um, best fight picks, you already know, uh, Half the Battle, dude's awesome. Um, you know, some of the other guys I talked to on Twitter, uh, the MMA Prophet, CIG MMA, you know, go give those guys a follow. They're, they're fun to talk to. But, um, yeah, man, just thanks for the support overall. But, uh, yeah, let's go over the last week's bets. Um, you know, last week I talked about for uh, UFC Hildago was probably the biggest roller coaster crazy night of my betting career. It went. It ended up going well. I said I wasn't gonna go and chase bets after things didn't go well, but um, you know that's what I. That's exactly what I did for um, Brasilia. Um, yeah, I messed up big time. Um, I lost eleven point nine units. The worst night of my career. Um, so basically, with the uh, 10 original bets I had, I would have only lost like 5.5 units, but I chased, man. Um, you know, things didn't go well for me in uh, the Eric Silva-Luan Chagas fight. I had the under and Luan Chagas, and then, um, you know, things picked back up with um, Juicier Formiga, but Tiago Santos blew it for me, man, and uh, I chased after, um, I put like 3.5 units on... Uh, Roy Nelson round one and uh, three and a half units on Chris Cyborg round one and neither of those came through so no it's just a terrible night for me but I gotta say um, I made two units on Invicta and I made another unit in Ryzen so I basically only lost like nine units but I mean I say only that's a lot for me but it is what it is we're gonna get back on track here um, yeah man breaking down this week's card uh, first up we got a uh, Kelly Fasholtz, minus 115, taking on Ketlin Vieira, minus 105. You know, I forgot how good Kelly Fasholtz is, man. Kelly Fasholtz is a scrapper. I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of respect for her. Um, she came in on eight days notice, taking on Lauren Murphy, so, who I also have a lot of respect for. You know, Lauren Murphy... Lauren Murphy, she had those close fights with uh, Sarah McMahon and Liz Carmouche. She could have easily won both those. I scored the um, the Sarah McMahon one for Sarah, but I I gave Lauren Murphy the Liz Carmouche fight easily. I I can I couldn't believe that she lost that fight. But yeah, I did some tape study on uh, Ketlin Vieira. There's not too much to find on her, and what you can find, it's really bad video. Um, I was just really underwhelmed with her striking, like. She, it's just not crisp at all, you know, you can tell, she's big and strong, I, I mean, she hasn't shown power on the feet, but her strength is on the ground, man, um, I've seen a couple of fights where almost, as soon as she gets the girl on the ground, she just turns them over and chokes them out, but, you know, Kelly Fashold, she can hold her own on the ground, man, I think, um, I think she should be able to stuff takedowns and, uh, piece Vieira up on the feet, honestly, um, and even if Vieira gets it there, I, I see Fashold holding her own, you know, um, out scrambling her. I, I just think this is all Kelly Fashold's, man. Um, I like her in a 30-27 decision, and I have 1.1 units on Kelly Fashold straight to win one unit. Um, next up, uh, Curtis Blades up to uh, minus 230 now, taking on Cody East plus 190. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Blades, man. Like, I was... I thought he was all right when I did my tape study for him against uh, Francis Naganu, and man, he really sh even in that loss against Naganu, he really showed me a lot. I liked it, man. And, you know, Naganu, he has gigantic power, and Blades was just eating shots, and you know, Blades is a really good wrestler, and Cody East, he's not the biggest heavyweight in the world, and Curtis Blades is this huge guy. I think, I mean. Cody East maybe he has the striking advantage, but I think Curtis Blades can easily hold his own, but I don't think it's going to be there that long. I think Curtis Blades should be able to take him down and beat him up, and 
I have Curtis Blades via a second round TKO. I mean, I, I just don't see this going well for Cody East. You know, both these guys are coming off 0-1. This is their second fight. Probably, this is probably a loser gets cut fight, to be honest. And, um... You know, uh, Curtis Blades had the better opponent, and he put on a better performance than Cody East. You know, um, I just think Cur Curtis Blades is going to be able to beat up Cody East on the uh, ground here to a second round TKO. And I have Curtis Blades in some uh, parlays, and I got him at a much better price than minus 230, so I'm very happy about that. But um, next up, I like this fight, man. Um, Eon Kutalaba, minus 160, taking on Jonathan Wilson, plus 140. That fight Jonathan Wilson had against uh, Frankenstein, um, Henrique Da Silva, that was an awesome fight, man. I had so much fun rewatching that. You know, Jonathan Wilson, um, he's got two fights in the UFC now against uh, Chris Dempsey and Frankenstein. And, you know, he starched uh, Chris Dempsey. A lot of people start uh, Chris Dempsey, so, I mean, that's not saying too much, but... Even in that loss against Frankenstein, I liked what Jonathan Wilson had to show there. I mean, you know, Frankenstein, dude, that guy is good, man. He's got he's got it all, man. He's got the heart, the determination, the chin, you know, the toughness. And Jonathan Wilson, he he was doing really well, you know. Um, he I think he won that first round. He he, he dropped Frankenstein in the second round. I mean, I mean he gassed a little, but that's just because of the pace that Frankenstein set on him, you know. Um, Ianku Talaba, he, you know, he he puts forth pressure and throws these big bombs. I mean, Wilson showed a pretty good chin against uh, Frankenstein, but, you know, I just think Wilson's the better fighter overall here. I think he can utilize his wrestling. I mean, the striking, it's probably even, to be honest, but Kutalaba has that power. Um, I like Wilson here. I like him in a decision. I think he's just going to be able to utilize his wrestling and, you know, dance around and jab Kudalaba up and watch out for those big bombs. I wanted to put money on Wilson here. I don't think I am. If Kelly Fashholtz and uh, Curtis Blades both come th through for me, I might put a unit on Wilson as long as the price is still the same. I mean, I'm sure it might be a little bit closer um, by fight time, but yeah, I like Jonathan Wilson here, man, via decision. I mean, as long as he can dodge those bombs, I think he, I think he can be all right, man. But, uh, you know, next up, uh, Tamden McCrory, the Barn Cat, minus 230, taking on Nate Marcourt, plus 190. You know, this fight's not even close in uh, Marcourt's front prime, man. I mean, Nate Marcourt was a motherfucker back in the day. I mean, he would have... If this was prime Nate Marcourt, he starches Tamden, but... You know, Tamden, he's a good fighter. He ran into Jocko. Jocko is a beast. I, I'm not sure if he underestimated Jocko or Jocko just really got that amazing, you know, one in a hundred shot. But you know, a lot of people were picking Tamden in that fight. I mean, I didn't. I mean, I picked Tamden, but I didn't put money on it. I mean, I knew Jocko. You know, he's a son of a bitch, man. He can he can fight, but. In this fight, you know, the way Nate's been looking lately, I, I just think Tamden's going to be able to, you know, outstrike him, outgrapple him. I mean, I don't know if Tamden's going to be able to finish Markor. I mean, he's a hard guy to submit on the ground, and that's where Tamden gets his finishes. You know, he knocked out Brennan Ward in Bellator, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Tamden's going to want to stand with Markor based on him getting knocked out in his last fight and him seeing uh, Nate Markor knock out uh, C.B. Dalloway. Um, Tamden was on that card. I was at that card. Uh, you know... I just think Tamden's going to want to play it safe here and utilize the wrestling and then, you know, grind him out in the ground. I don't think he can submit Nate McCrory. So, um, you know, my pick is a uh, Tamden McCrory 30-27 decision, and I do have uh, McCrory and a parlay or two. Um, next up, uh, Kaita Nakamura, minus 145, taking a Lizu Zaleski Dos Santos, plus 125. This is a really fun fight. Um Nakamura, I'm a big fan of Nakamura, man. Kaida, dude's a beast, man. I, I picked Lee G Jing Liang in that fight against him. I mean, I just thought Lee was going to be able to do his thing, and he was for a little bit, but, uh, you know, Kaida came back and got that uh, 
comeback win. It was super impressive. You know, there's a lot of things that Kaida shows that I really like. You know, the toughness, the cardio, the grit. Um, Elizu, he, he is the same, man. He has toughness and grit, too. But, you know, Elizu, he can, he can get taken down relatively easy. And I think Kaida, for... A Japanese fighter, Japanese fighters usually aren't really known for their wrestling, but I think Kaida has very good wrestling. I think he can be able to take down um, Zaleski and submit him. Um, you know, on the feet, I think it'll be really fun as long as it lasts on the feet, but um, I think Elizu might crack uh, Kaida with a good shot. His chin will hold up and Kaida will say, you know what, fuck this, I'm going to take it down to the ground. But um, yeah, man, I like Kaida Nakamura via second round uh, submission, and I have him in one parlay. I really like Kaida there. But uh, next up, a um, <laughs> couple heavyweights. Shamil Abdurakhimov, minus 115, taking on Walt Harris, minus 105. So um, going into this, I, I thought, um, I just thought Shamil, but after tape study, you know, I like Walt Harris now a lot, actually. Um, you know, it's heavyweights, anything can happen. Um, I wouldn't. I'm not going to bet Walt Harris at this price just yet. I mean, I doubt people are going to throw a lot of money on Shamil, so it's most likely just going to be a fight I'm going to stay away from. But my pick's Walt Harris, man. Um, You know, Shamil's got a... He, Shamil supposedly has this big Sambo background, and I haven't seen any of it in the UFC. You know, that fight against Tim Johnson, you know, it was a sloppy striking match at first, and then the second Tim Johnson got it on the ground, and he got it on the ground relatively easy, by the way. The second he got him down, he patted him out right away. Um, and Walt Harris, his fight against Cody East, he showed really good ground and pound, you know. He took Cody East down and just beat the shit out of him. Um, you know, Walt Harris is a big, huge, strong, athletic guy. Uh, I think he can crack Shamil and then um, finish him off on the ground in a... Uh, you know, a first or second round TKO. I, I really like Harris here. I think, I think it'd be tough for uh, Shamil to outstrike Harris for three rounds without getting caught with something. So, um, I like the big ticket here, but no bet as of right now. Um, next up, Hakran Diaz minus one seventy five taking on Andre Feely plus one fifty five. You know, I really like Hakran Diaz, and I like Andre Feely too, but. Maybe if Andre Feely didn't take this on short notice and he had the very best day of his life, he could go out there and crack Diaz and put him away, but Diaz is a grinder, man, you know, he outgrinded the the king of the grind, Darren Elkins, you know, Hawker and Diaz, he's a very good fighter, man, I mean, he, he only loses to the very best, and... You know, Feely, he shows promise. He's young, but I don't think he's one of the very best. I think this should be an easy one for uh, Hawker and Diaz. I think he's going to be able to mix up the strikes and the wrestling, you know, push Feely against the cage for a little while. Um, I, I think, especially at a short notice, that Diaz is a very safe pick here, especially at minus 175. I mean, that's a good price, man. I mean, you see what Feely did to Gabriel Benitez? I mean, that was some crazy stuff, but... I just don't know, man. I think Hawker and Diaz is just a whole nother beast from uh, Gabriel Benitez, even though Benitez showed how good he can be against uh, Sam Cecilia's of the world. Um, I just really like Diaz here, man. I think you can just outclass him in every aspect of the fight. Uh, I like Diaz a 30-27 decision here. Um, next up, uh... <laughs> My man, uh, Luis Henrique da Silva Frankenstein, t uh, minus 145, taking on Joachim Christensen, the, what is he, from Denmark, t uh, plus 125. I love Frankenstein, man, this is, this is my guy, I love Frankenstein, he's a beast, man, um, you know, he, like I said when I was breaking down the, uh, Wilson Kudalaba fight, I, you know, Frankenstein, he showed it, man. He showed all the aspects you need to have, especially a light heavyweight where dudes have big power, you know. He showed a ch he shows a chin. He just keeps coming forward. Frankenstein is literally the perfect nickname for the guy, man. I mean, you could hit him with a fucking brick and he'll just keep coming swinging bombs and you know, not only that, he's really technical. I'm a big fan of Frankenstein here and Joaquin Christensen, I wasn't impressed with him at all, man. I mean, those guys he was fighting were not good at all. His last fight, he got a submission win, but I looked that dude up, and that dude has gotten submitted like 10, 15 times. I mean, you know, Christensen, his best chance here is his power, and 
Frankenstein's got that chin, so I'm very, very surprised by the line here. I can't believe that Frankenstein is only a minus 145. I mean, he's already had the UFC fight. Christensen's coming in on his first UFC fight. I mean, I can't believe the line here. I mean, Frankenstein, I think he's just going to be able to uh, knock out Christensen in the first round. I think it'll be a slugfest in the first minute. Christensen will start to get a little comfy, and then boom, you know, Frankenstein's going to land that shot. He's going to do to him what he, he did to everybody else on the Brazilian circuit, honestly. So, um, I have two units on uh, Frankenstein here to win 1.5, and I'm, I'm very happy with that bet. But, um, moving on to the main card now, we got um, Josh Berkman, minus 235, taking on Zach Otto, plus 195. I'm not impressed with the Otto, man, I mean... A lot of the newcomers on this card, you know, Otto, Christensen, um, Vieira, I'm not impressed with any of these guys. I'm surprised by the newcomers they um, brought onto this card. Uh, and, you know, Josh Berkman, he's a grizzled beast veteran, and he's looking good at 155, man. That last fight he had against Paul Felder, you know, Paul Felder won, but it was really close, and Josh Berkman showed he can still hang with the best, and Zach Otto is a step below from the best, so I like Josh Berkman to... Um, I like Josh Berkman to outstrike Otto here. I mean, Otto, he, his best um, aspect of fighting is the ground, and I think Josh Berkman will know that, and he's not going to let him get to the ground. I think Josh Berkman is going to have a good time, uh, you know, outstriking Otto here. And you, you know, Berkman has good wrestling defense, and even if Otto gets to the ground, Berkman has shown a very good ground game. You know, this guy's been around forever, and a guy as unimpressive to me as Otto, I just don't think he's going to be able to beat Berkman. I like Berkman via 30-27 decision here, and I will be using him in a parlay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, next up, fun, fun fight. Uh, my pick for fight, it, fight of the night as long as it lasts anyway. Um, up to minus 440 now, Luis Smolka taking on Brandon Moreno plus 350. Brandon Moreno coming off this season of tough that he's still on. I don't know if that's ever happened before a um, an ultimate fighter fighter um, fighting before his season even ends. I, I'm not sure if that's happened before, but um, yeah, man, Brandon Moreno, um, that fight he had against Alexandre Pantoa in uh, the first episode of this new season, that was a fucking war, man. That was such a good fight. I loved that fight. You know, Brandon Moreno, he comes out strong. He, he's got decent striking. Um, you know... That's about it, though, man. I mean, I don't think he has much of a ground game and or much of cardio. And, you know, that's two of Luis Smoke's best attributes is his cardio and his ground game. So I think Smoke is going to be able to weather the storm. And it won't even be that much of a storm, man. He can hang. Smoke has got a good strike, man. I mean, you seen that kick he got against, um, what's his name, the Australian guy, um, Richie Vasilik. Yeah. <sighs> Smoke has got um, Chris unorthodox, you know, Real technical striking. Um, he can do it all, man. I like Smoke. He's a young guy. He's getting better every day. So, um, you know, aside some, from some crazy knockout in the first round, I really like Smoke here. I, I'm going to pick Smoke in an early suck, second round sub, maybe even a, a late first round sub, but I like Smoke here, man. Um, minus 440. I think that's about right. You know, Moreno, he showed. I mean, well, he hasn't. I haven't seen it, but. You know, he trains with Henry Cejudo, so you got to think his wrestling defense is improving every day. But, you know, Louis Smoke is a whole other animal, man. This is a tough fight for him. But, uh, yeah, man, I got Louis Smoke via second round sub. Next up, the co-main of the event, co -main event, Will Brooks minus 270, taking on Alex Oliveira plus 230. <sighs> this is a really interesting fight, man. Um, Will Brooks, you know... I've told people this before, <laughs> you can call me crazy, but I really think the three best lightweights in the world are the Bellator guys, uh, Michael Chandler, Eddie Alvarez, and Will Brooks, those three guys, and uh, I'm sticking with that, man. I think Will Brooks is the truth. Um, you know, he looked good against Pearson, but he didn't look like a world beater, like a top five guy that I claim he is. Um, but, you know, that was his first fight, and Pearson's a vet, a really good veteran, Give, he, it's hard to look good against Pearson, you know, unless you just have the perfect night of your life. But, um, you know, Will Brooks, I just think he's better than Alex Oliveira everywhere here. I mean, Oliveira probably has more power on the feet, but I think Will Brooks is going to know that. And I think he's going to take it to the ground and grind Oliveira out to a 30-27 uh, decision. Um, you know, I like Oliveira, but 
I just think Wilbrooks is on a whole new level. So um, I, I like uh, I like uh, Wilbrooks here via 3027 decision. And uh, next up, the main event of the evening: John Dodson minus 130 taking on John Lineker plus 110. Man. Uh, this is a, such a close matchup. I'm not betting on it. I just want to stay away and enjoy, man. Um, you know, the way I see it is either Lineker, early KO. I don't even know, man. Me, anything can happen here. I think Lineker could win a decision. Dodson could win a decision. Lineker could knock him out. I think the most unlikely thing is Dodson knocking out Lineker. I mean, maybe in the fourth or fifth. I mean, we've ever seen what John Lineker's gas tank is like. But... I mean, that's even if it gets there, so, um, but, you know, my gut tells me John Dodson, but my brain tells me John Lineker, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with my gut here, I like John Dodson via 48-47 decision, and, you know, since I have it that close, there's no way I'm gonna bet on it, especially with Lineker's hands, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know, man, um, a lot of it depends on how Dodson comes out, if he wants to come and beat Lineker to the punch, or if he wants to, uh, you know, dance around and jab him up. Um, I think Lineker's going to have his moments, but I think Dodson's going to get the better of uh, the striking. Um, I, I think Lineker's going to be able to get him down and hold him down for at least one round, but, uh, you know, I like Dodson by decision here, man. It's, it's a super fun fight, but, uh, you know, getting to uh, my bets here. I got seven bets. I got, um, I got two straight bets here. I got two units on Frankenstein to win uh, 1.5 units. 1.1 units on Kelly Fasholtz to win one unit. And then my big parlay, I got a three-legger of uh, two units, Smolka, Blades, and Diaz to win 4.1. That's a uh, plus 204. I got one unit, Blades, McCrory, Brooks to win 2.1 units. That's at uh, plus 208. I got 1.2 units on Berkman, Smolka to win one unit, minus 120. I got one unit, Nakamura, Brooks, plus 128 to win 1.3 units. And I got one unit on Berkman, McCrory to win 1.1 units. That's a um, plus 111. But, uh, yeah, man, um, you know, this card's all right. There's some names I like on it. There's some fun matchups, but it's really all about that main event, man. But, um, yeah, man, fun card. Uh, that's all I got for you guys. Um, trying to think, oh, yeah, follow me on uh, Twitter at MMA Cutlin, you know, um, you know, you can check out my Capper Tech if you really are interested in my uh, terrible betting from last week's card, you know, um, plus uh, 16 units on the year right now. I, I was uh, plus 26, but uh, after last week's debacle, um, got to work my way up, man, and I'm um, happy to do it. I, you know, I love betting the, on this sport, man. It's really fun. Um, but yeah, I'm out. Um, you know, thanks for watching, guys. Um, enjoy the fights.